Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask Enki. Today we're going to catch up on some of the beautiful things, updates and events and of course some news that we've missed for this past few days. So starting off, the last time we talked about Blender Foundation or Blender, we talked about the fact that the homepage has been reworked, looks cool. I like the whole look about this one. I think it's about time that the whole thing was changed and you can see you right here you can see it's all about the people the ecosystem just a lot of things now with that said let's take a look at the new updates for blender 2.93 0.5 the LTS that was just released so the LTS release of Blender 2.93.5 is now here and you can of course get this for Windows Linux and also for Mac so if you go over to the change log right now you would also see a huge set of updates in terms of fixes that is now here for those dealing with grease pencil problems and all that this has now been fixed and of course you can get this for Windows Steam and also on snap so depending on the platform that you're working with you can as well get this and start working with it and to me this makes a lot of sense seeing the fact that blender 2.93 the lts is good and with that said let's talk about a big news that happened last week that deals with apple joining the blender development fund so right now apple is now part of the blender development fund and i did mention that if you go over to the patreon section since this is a tier that they joined you would not see anything there initially i felt maybe the page wasn't updated yet but it is what it is right now you would not be able to see them meanwhile there's already a commit for cycles metal device and this is to track metal device development and also some pretty cool metal gp implementations that might be coming over to cycle so there's also this conversation where a lot of people might be asking when are we going to have the mobile version of blender you know for devices like ipad pro and lots of you guys are just suggesting maybe if we can get like the grease pencil version or maybe we can get just the sculpting version of blender on ipad pro that might be better and for sure that is also something that i would love to see but at this point we're only having apple supporting blender foundation as patreon members and of course we will definitely be seeing some improvements for mac users and with that said let's take a look at some of the updates that are currently available for blender 3.0 the alpha that you can get your hands in so if you go over to where you have your edit go over to your preference right now within your preference if you go over to where you have as your themes and go down here where you have your user interface scroll all the way down and right over here you will notice that we have a very tiny update that deals with panel roundness so if you use this you would notice that there is a couple of updates you know they're very tiny updates and i think this is more like housekeeping updates for the user interface so right now your panels can now have a much more rounded view so you can also see that implement all over the place like right over here as well so if i move this you can see that all right so this uh this is pretty cool and you can also choose to do things like that and then you can go back and forth so depending on what you're looking at what you're working with you can set this roundness to suit what you want something else that you can set which is not just the roundness of these things is if you go over to the edit go over to preference and go all the way to where we have teams right here you can still choose to play with how the menu roundness practically almost everything here has roundness so if i just simply right click you can see what the menu back looks like you can see it just has a bit of a bevel but if we like to get more stuff we can just go in and increase the roundness and of course you can see that right there and you might also want to play with the selection roundness as well that is also something that you can do so if you also go over to the menu item you can increase the roundness of that and you can get it so this is more like you trying to get this sort of sweet looking oval feel for your blender ui so if this is something you're into of course you can do all of this you can also go over to the tooltip you know increase the roundness for that if you want to play with the roundness within the, like the progress bar you can still do that the scroll bar already has its own so practically anything you want to deal with has this stuff so right here where we have the number bars as well or the number fields you can also increase the roundness and you can get something like that so this is totally up to you and i think for for most people this is something they didn't know existed with blender but right now that you have access to it you can start working with it to create that beautiful blender ui that you've always wanted 
for sure we've also gotten a couple of other updates to the geometry nodes so if you go over to the geometry nodes right now there is now a set and a get attribute that you can work with you can now set different things that deals with your curve so you can set your curve tilt your handle type you can set your curve radius and also your spline type you can actually set a couple of things right here and for a much more better explanation i'm also going to drop this link in the description where you guys can be able to come through and see some input nodes that you might be needing and also some set nodes that you can now work with so like we said earlier you can set your radius your point radius your curve tilt curve handle positions and so on and so forth at the same time there's a couple of extra nodes that are coming over to the geometry nodes right now that deals with texture so some of these texture nodes have been ported to the geometry nodes and some of them deals with the veronite texture the white noise texture you can also see the gradient texture node so these nodes have been ported to the geometry nodes at this point so just in case you know you want to work with this you can now get the most out of them of course there's also some extra nodes that has made their way to the geometry nodes that deals with rotate instance the scale instance the translate instance node these nodes will definitely help you translate scale and also rotate instances that you're working with so one cool reason why these transform nodes will make a lot of sense is unlike what you get with your mesh or point cloud points these transform nodes would also keep the previous or the existing transforms that they've inherited so these will definitely be useful for most people that would want to create some very interesting looking patterns or probably you want to create some interesting looking geometries by simply using the geometry node these would come in very handy and while we still talk about the geometry node there's a couple of updated nodes that are now available in the geometry node now one of them is the subdivision surface node this has been updated to compensate for the new changes that is now available there is currently a new field version of the mesh to curve node that is also updated to fit in and at the same time the edge speed node has been updated to fit in for the fields and of course there is also a couple more like the separate and delete geometry for fields and finally we have the field transfer attribute node so some of these nodes have been updated you know to compensate and fit into the new set of field nodes that is now available and of course this is just to make the use of blender geometry nodes way better now for those who would also want to do some things like adding selections to instances on points there is also a very cool node like this that is currently available and this adds a boolean selection field to the instance on a simple point node and for sure this will select which points from the source geometry that will be used to create the instance and for most people an option like this would definitely come in very handy as you can use this particular node to do more of a boolean operation from a simple selection and these can be very useful for creating way more cooler procedural stuff and one more thing within the geometry node is right now the rotate eula now uses local instead of points to me i think this is more of an update with the ui since points aren't relevant in function nodes what happened is replace all mentions of it with the word local and this is to illustrate that these rotations are done within local space instead of being done in the point space which you know i guess this is more like a, a ui update instead of having the name set to point it is now set to local now moving over to cycles the christensen boli sss will be restored back to blender 3.0 as there's not going to be enough time to improve the random walk to handle all cases so it just simply means that these would be here for a while and hopefully in 3.1 or maybe in subsequent release of the version 3 we might be seeing a much more improved random walk come over to blender now while we talk about things i might also want to see for blender 3.0 with cycles there is an improved sss fresnel and retro reflection in principle bsdf and of course there is also the improved volume stack size calculation so what this does is it only calculates object or it only counts the volume objects after the shader has been optimized and what it actually helps you do more is it discards every single object that doesn't have an effective volume bsdf connected to the shader output so for those who are looking at ways to improve memory for further use cases this would definitely be useful once you're working with cycles and while we talk about the things that will be useful let's get physical with some very cool adaptive cloud simulation now this is more like a roundup of the episode 4 for the google summer of code but there are some very interesting things that will be coming over to blender if this pulls through to the main branch so what this does is it actually remeshes your model based off the simulation that you're running so you can go through and check out some of the values here more like what you have with a default remesh but instead of just having your default remesh you're now having more of a dynamic remeshing happening so you can tweak this to fit into what you want and in most cases if you've also sewn several edges 
pieces or several points together you can of course proceed to even remesh those parts and of course you can go ahead and throw in that adaptive remesh modifier and you can tweak this to your satisfaction so you can choose to have a minimum remeshing you can also choose to have a maximum remeshing depending on what you like you can dial in the numbers that suit what you're going for and get the most out of it and it doesn't stop there because they are also looking at the dynamic remesh that is based of the curvature of the mesh that you're working with now for those that are thinking about doing rigid body there's also a very tiny discussion that deals with how objects react to velocity acceleration and forces and of course these things have a couple of color codes that you notice within the screen certain things like the normal effector and gravitational force as seen as pink and frictional forces are yellow and of course the resultant is set to cyan so once you take a look at the playback you can see where individual forces have been noted and this doesn't even stop there there is also another very cool illustration that deals with how interpretation of collision should look like and to every frame where something actually collides with another object that particular section of the model simply lights up and to me i think this is also something that a lot of people would want to see so just in case you're trying to make sure that your objects collide with each other the simple idea that these things actually light up based on the sections that are touching each other will definitely come in very handy and of course there's just lots of things that also deals with the slider the hinge and also the piston and so far so good the roundup of the episode 4 for the google summer of code has been a very wonderful one you might also want to come through and check out some of the animation tips that you probably didn't have an idea about now most of these things do contain spoilers of course if you're into animation and you're looking for a couple of tips and tricks that might get you up to speed then this is definitely something that you should consider checking out the folks at blender cloud have also not only uploaded this particular blog they have also gone through to make a very cool announcement that deals with the fact that Sprite Fright premiere dates are now concrete. And this simply means that Sprite Fright will be airing all over the world on the 29th of October 2021. And of course, for those who like to see the pre premiere, this will be happening on Thursday the 28th at the iFilm, exactly the same place where spring was premiered so this is somewhere in amsterdam i believe and of course if you're within the location you might want to book your seat right now as the theater itself has limited number of seats you shout out to the folks at blender studio for wrapping up on this particular project and making sure that everyone within the blender community followed the project from beginning all the way to the end now with all of this said let's talk about some free stuff that you guys will be getting of course we know everybody loves free stuff and this week we will be starting off by taking a look at some amazing free add-ons that you can grab. The very first one is the camera shakeify and this is a very cool add-on that you can use to add realistic camera shakes to your cameras directly in Blender. This is supported for Blender 2.91 all the way to whatever version that you have right now and it just simply makes sense. It's very easy to work with, very clean for free simply come through download this and work with it alongside with that there is also the transfer image free add-on and this image free add-on is made available by anam deep now we've already talked about anam deep before it simply makes sense that anam deep actually releases free add-ons almost every week so right now there is this free one that he has he also has released the quick roughness layer free add-on so you might want to come through and check it out the last time we talked about him we mentioned the free add-on that he has that you can use to import stuff as decals and also you can bake a node free add-on that is also available so all of these free add-ons are available so you might want to come through and check it out and of course he is the very same creator of the run tools np quarter so for those that have been looking for free add-ons these ones are right here and you can grab it but this is not all about it there are more free stuff that you guys may want to check out as there is also the K world texture render pass baking for Blender. So this is also another very cool free add-on that you might want to see and is made available by KGEL. So KGEL does have a couple of things right here. So you might want to, you know, grab them. If you're into free stuff, you might want to grab them. And of course, there is this beautiful one that I may probably talk about. Like right now, you notice I did purchase it. And this deals with the dynamic sky texture for Blender 2.93 and above. So if you've been looking for that free add-on that can give you that sky-like feel, you wanna get that dynamic sky, you might want to see Amin or you know go over to his page where he has some very cool free stuff 
that you can get he actually posts a lot of free stuff here so you might want to get it i guess the last time we talked about him was when he had the procedural ring and now you can get this one as well this is also looking cool you can grab this now finally there is one more that i think might just simply make sense and it is the mouse strapping so how many times have you actually felt like walking or navigating faster within a large scene in blender and i believe almost every time you want to do that but of course you can because you don't have an add-on that actually makes that happen and the mouse strapping is an add-on that you might want to check out as it actually gives you that first person shooter perspective thingy that you can use to do some amazing stuff for yourself and that's about it lots of things for you guys to grab this week and of course if you're into any of these things that we've talked about link to this is going to be in the description so do well to check it out tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you learned something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss next video or the next update and i'll see you guys in the next one